dubbed the Gallery of the People, the Melrose Gallery is a leading pan-African contemporary space located in Johannesburg and Cape Town. Passionate about African culture and traditions, the gallery has become a home in which artists, collectors and the public gather as a community to present and celebrate their stories, lives and creative practices in contemporary ways. So what better place to bring you this week's edition of Trends Travel. Hello and welcome, I'm your host Eloise Scoble. Today we start you off in the Northern Cape. The original Khoi Khoi people named the waterfall found here Ankrubis, meaning the place of the big noises. The Trek Boers who later settled in the area derived the name Ograbis. But no matter what you call it, there are few sights as awesome or sounds as deafening as water thundering down the 56 meter Ograbis waterfall, especially when the Orange River is in full flood. of Northern Cape, just 20 kilometers away from the town of Kakamas. This place is called the Okhrabis Waterfall. It got its name from the sand people who called it a place of great noise because of the large body of water that you are seeing and hearing behind me. It is breathtaking. It's Why beautiful. Be? You just can't stop smiling. Oh, and the air. It is one of the Northern Cape's biggest tourist attractions, not only for its unmatched scenery, but for its thundering sound of water cascading down the 50 meters of rocks from the Orange River to Namibia. The sound is so great that the town is named after this waterfall. It is an all-year-round tourist spot due to its high temperatures in the province. Tourists find themselves here at different seasons of the year just to marvel at this nature's wonder. Especially when it's uh, winter time when the rain is very dry here. So there's just a trickle of water coming down and it's spectacular when the water is, is this high. So we drove all the way from Cape Town to come and see it. While most people come here to capture the waterfall, some come for the wildlife as well as the fauna and flora that is found here. The large waterfall is coming from the longest river in South Africa, the Orange River. It actually originates from Lesotho and then it thunders down through this amazing abyss of almost 90 meters and for 18 kilometers and it ends through at uh, and it ends in Alexander Bay. The waterfall is not only captivating for its picturesque scenery but it's known for providing the tourists with an experience of landing on the moon due to this famous moon rock. As you can see um, the landscape here it looks like you're walking actually literally on the moon. Um, this is a rock granite, and the rock granite is, uh, it was formed um, due to, you know, like the different types of rocks and the light grey and the area that looks like really like walking on the moon. With its multiple viewpoints, the Orange River Gorge provides a unique view of this natural wonder. So I'm told that this area is the gorge where you get an almost 360 view of the waterfall. I can hear it, I want to see it. Okay, it almost sounds like the water is coming from underneath, but this is where the northern and the southern side of the Orange River water come and meet at the Okhrabi's waterfall. But where I'm standing, it sounds like the water is coming from underneath. But let me tell you a secret. Apparently, there is a honeymoon suite behind there. So we're actually making lo noise for the lovers. Shh, let's go. 
South Africa is truly a tourist's dream. With so much more wonders of nature, one can never get enough of local travel. Coming up after the break, we take it to a different type of artwork, one that is not housed in the confines of a gallery, but in the streets of Joburg and in the hearts of its people. Before we go, we'd like to remind you to keep safe during the second COVID wave by doing three of the easiest things imaginable. One, always wear a face mask. Two, always sanitize your hands using an alcohol-based sanitizer or simply wash out soap and water for at least two minutes. And three, practice social distancing. We'll be right back. What started as a hobby in 2008 has awarded this young lad an opportunity to travel the world, making a name for himself while putting some colour on our streets. Bungani studied human resources, but during his spare time he would sit in a library and study art, and that interest has earned him an award as South Africa's best graffiti artist. Uh, my name is Dibangs, I'm a street artist. Um, and basically I paint walls. Yeah, I was commissioned to do this one and what I decided to do with the concept is basically commemorate the everyday type of people, um, the people who pass here, people who can relate to it and that's why the artwork is called Rooted. So it basically, as you can see, it's like all South African culture um, and yeah, everything of, every, every thing of all walks of life, so everyday journeys. Uh, people who come to the city to do their hustle, people who come in through to fulfill their purposes here, find their way, find uh, whatever it is that has brought them to the city, but still reminding them of where they are from and for them not to be swallowed by the city. So I guess it's there to say, yeah, keep on going, but then don't forget where you're coming from and yeah your way will be much brighter and lighter and much more illuminated, I guess. <laughs> he started by tagging and progressed to portraits and collaborations and the list just keeps getting longer and longer. So we are on another wall, still by the Joe City Precinct. Um, so with this one I worked with Deco and Lano because um, it was a big wall and the uh, concept uh, for this one because it's a digital school. So I started to go back to the basics of um, being schooled. So learning from books, but then digitizing it, taking it to the modern world. Um, also how playing can also teach kids. Um, so it's basically reading, playing, and then activating that through normal everyday life. So this is just the growth of that, like moving from getting the knowledge to actually exercising it. So even with this one, uh, the message of this one is like, um, seek wisdom and never fear the dark. So don't be, don't scared, don't be scared of any doubts and um, discouragement and any, anything, any negative thoughts that, you, that may hold you uh, along the way. Um, so yeah, this one took I think about a week. Um, yeah, and it was a fun war, and yeah, I think I appreciate it because of the message of it and that the people really enjoyed it. They came through, they were interacted, and they understood what it, what it was about. And yeah, for the fact that it's a school as well, the kids are, they, they were really fun and engaging about it. Ghana, Angola, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Nigeria and New York have been colourfully adorned by Dibongs, but we take it back to where the heart is, home. So where are we now? Uh, right now in my hood, um, yeah, my pride and joy in Musake. Um, yeah, this is basically where I grew up and the streets that I learned everything that I pretty much know right now, yeah. So that was the artwork? Um, this one was for, it was to address the issues of uh, gender-based violence. Um, since, uh, yeah, there was a whole scourge of it. 
Um, so it was basically to say that to the victims of that of, of gender-based violence, uh, be healed. So it was a way of comforting them and for them to know that uh, we are there for them. And as males, uh, as a male, I felt like it was a need for me to, even if I couldn't voice it out, but I could show it in a visual way. So I felt like yeah, there was a need for me to say, be healed. Yeah, we are we comforting you. Um, we like you to feel safe and free and. Yeah, just be at home in this beautiful world that, we, that is ours, yeah. This is the one that caught my attention. Can you tell us about it, please? Oh, this one is very close to my heart because it's the first artwork that I ever did in, in my hood. Yeah. Um, and it was after getting so much support and then so much encouragement for me to keep doing what I was doing. So it was a sense of gratitude for me to say thank you so much. Uh, but at the same time, it is a metaphor to say that uh, everything that you have faith on or faith about, it, it can actually come to be. Um, so yeah, everything bad that happens in life, there's always going to be bad, hence there's the red on that side, but he's looking away from it to look on the blue side, which is like a sense of hope, say that um, be confident about where your journey and where it is that you're going and focus on what it is that your path sets you on um, and yeah it's basically about that and I'm so glad that the community actually became part of it it was supposed to be a small wall there was a billboard there they helped me to take it out to make it a big wall they did a little garden here the people were coming and just being supportive about it and I really appreciate it from Mushakeng to the world the world truly is his oyster Theatres are back in well semi-full swing and they kick off with a one-woman show entitled Kampur. It tells the story of a woman who was brutally raped during the anglo boer War and after a series of events, she re-encounters her rapist. It is in the retelling of this story that the resilience of the human spirit is weighed up against the equally persistent influence of trauma, a psychological thriller that is grippingly portrayed by South African actress Sandra Prinsloo. The Market Theatre in Johannesburg welcomed audiences for the first time since shutting its doors to the public when the national lockdown started last year. To kickstart the new normal, the theatre opened with an Afrikaans play titled Kampur, Die Verhaal van Susan Nel. Directed by international award-winning director Lara Foote, the play is based on true events. The theatre piece is essentially a version of the book, so it's an adaptation of the book. Um, of the novel, but essentially it's taking the essence of the story and finding a theatrical framework, form and structure to hold it together so that we can then share it with the audience. What we've done is the setting alters so that the narrative is told through uh, the eyes of the storyteller as if she's confessing to an audience, as if it's a testimony speaking of her experiences and what happened to her directly. Award-winning actress Sandra Prinsloo plays the title role of Susan Nell. The play is based on a real-life experience by a woman who was called Susan Nell. And Susan Nell is a survivor of a concentration camp, but also a rape survivor and an assault survivor who doesn't think that she's ever going to live. Well, we think that, you know, she couldn't possibly have survived all this. But through chance and luck and the help of other people, she does become a, psych a psychiatric nurse. And she moves on from South Africa to Holland. But then she moves on through the help of a woman in Cape Town to, 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 to get to Holland where she studies the psychiatric nursing. And in the end, she goes to England where She's treating uh, soldiers with shell shock, with bomb shock. And um, she's confronted there. One of her patients turns out to be the rapist. So of course you can imagine what a dilemma that creates for her because she has sworn an oath to do no harm, but all she can think of is actually murder. So what is she going to do with this man?
maar daar die oor het een mek aan. Die lel is weg. En dit is haar mek. The solo performance gives the audience a detailed experience of events that transpired during the Anglo-Boer War. <laughs> I don't have words. It's, um, it's in incredible. It's so intimate. It's uh, incredible to see Sandra standing there uh, telling the story. I I'm just talking about it, I've got goosebumps. It's, yeah, what a night. It's, uh, it's incredible being here and seeing it in person. The, the experience itself was, was very, very tense. I think the, the play itself, uh, very insightful. The actress was very, very good, as we, as we thought she would be. Um, so, so I would definitely recommend people to come and see. It's not over just yet, and we're off to a quick break. But in the meantime, why don't you grab your phone and like and follow us on any of our social media platforms, on Instagram or Twitter. That's at Trends on SAVC. Many of us believe that we are great drivers until we have the opportunity to do a lap on a professional track. Then we realize that maybe we're not so hot behind the wheel. This week, we spice up our driving skills in exhilarating performance vehicles with safety training at high speeds, learning vehicle control at the highest level, and enabling us to apply these skills and techniques safely when we're out on the road. But before we take it out on the road, we take it around the Swartkops Raceway track. Today we fancy ourselves race drivers, as we take to a professional racetrack, doing some high speed laps in a high performance vehicle, but one just doesn't get on a track. There are a few things that need to be in place before you can. So let's rewind, take it back, and see just how we got here. We start the day in the presentation room of the Performance Driving Academy. Discussing tires, discussing weather conditions, discussing uh, the vehicle and its technology, and taking technology off and putting it back on again. So that's, that's particularly important. I want you to go away here knowing that you're a safer driver. From the theory of it all to the practical, that starts at the wet outdoor skid pan. But before we get into it, it's first things first. And we're going to position our hands, fingers over the spoke, finger over the spoke, and that's how I want you to practice it. And look at you nice and comfortable, good length, 45 degree angle, and here, we're not too far away from the steering, we're not too close. So it's very important to be sitting right. Our first practical lesson is learning skid control, which in layman's terms is stopping the vehicle from a flat-out spin. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Turning to the corner. Increase your acceleration, go. Control, control, off the accelerator. Okay, now remember to come off the accelerator. Off. What you did was you started accelerating. When you said off it. Yes. Now here's how it should look and be done. Take the corner, accelerate, and as you begin to feel the skid, release the accelerator to take control of the vehicle and exit gracefully. No spin out, no brake. The second practical lesson is in collision avoidance. Speeding head on toward a barrier, in this case the cones, and stopping dead before hitting them. Part two of this exercise is the dead brake, accompanied by a swift turnout to avoid the cones. Then lastly, it's stop, turn out, and keep going in one fluid motion. With that mastered, the skid pan is cleared out for the professionals to show us their tricks and stunts. It's a lot of drifting and sliding and turning and spinning. Okay, now for someone in the know, ah, you would know, because I'm watching Fast and Furious and I'm thinking, are they really doing that? Is that really happening? Yes, you've got stunt drivers and precision drivers and big budgets. And the whole hype is there and it's just done and edited right and really makes it look good. Um, that can be taken to that level. Once again, it's, it's got to do with, you need to have considered all forms of motorsport. You notice some of the best stunt drivers in the world have come from, from forms of motorsport and high performance motorsport. It's the only ground that you can really work off 
to become better and in that field, to really understand the car and, and obviously what you are doing with it. And that's just come with that experience and the knowledge behind the steering wheel and by the seat of your pants feeling, knowing what that, how that vehicle is speaking to you. To learn the language of the vehicle, we are back in the presentation room to understand technology, safety braking systems, and even vehicle handling. We're going to do high performance vehicle control. So how do you take a corner? Where do you brake? How do you steer? So the skid band we covered collision avoidance and skid control, and now we're doing high performance driving to equip you in all conditions out on the road. Now it's time to get onto the road, or more specifically, the professional racetrack where we are guided step by step by the instructor who sits in the passenger seat. After the first lap, it was now time to add the speed. At the end of the day, we'd like to know what others thought of the experience. It's super cool. I honestly didn't know um, how difficult it was to be a race driver, yeah. but now I'm just even more envious of the guys that can do it for a living. You're pretty much, you know, taking you guys, uh, not knowing what to expect in a certain way, and also with all due respect, not knowing really what to do behind the steering wheel, other than the norm where you close your eyes and wait for the vehicle to stop, panic. Um, taking you into the skid pan and the track situation and actually going, going to do the real stuff. Get into the car, use the right position, the technique, and then obviously the knowledge to go accordingly. And when do you use the brake, how do you use the steering, and using all of those to be a better driver. I should be driving differently. <laughs> Honestly, I've been, <laughs> I've been a danger on the road. <laughs> Goodbye, Totsins, Ambagate, and even Arawa. As Shakespeare said, parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say goodnight till it be morrow. But fret not, we will be back with more of your favorite travel and lifestyle show next week, same time, same place. In the meantime, if you miss us too much, you can always catch us on YouTube. I'm Louise Scoble, signing out for Trends Travel. Goodbye.